A uh, very good afternoon to all those of you who are watching this today. Today uh, we are tackling active and passive voice for Grade 9 English First Additional Language. And of course, this is being presented by me. And that is who I am. Let's go straight into this. The active voice in the simple form we're going to look at first. And just a reminder there, when the sentence is in the active voice, it is the subject that is doing the action. Here are some examples. There you can see uh, Palesa is the subject and buys is the action. And the sentence reads, Palesa buys stationery. And then we have uh, the spring box as the subject and win as the action that is taking place here. We have here the principal drove the bus, and of course the principal is the subject, and drove is the action that is taking place. And we have here the artists painted the pictures, and obviously the artists are the is. The artists is the subject of the sentence, and painted is the action that is occurring. Now, let's take a look at the passive voice. Also, remember, this is in the simple form of the sentence. Well, the simple form of the tense, I should say. And we have here, when a sentence is in the passive voice, it is the object doing the action. And here are some examples. Okay, we'll take that same sentence and now move it over into the passive voice. And you've got here, stationery is bought by Palesa and Palesa is doing the buying in that case. And again, the match is won by <laughs> the Bokka. It is the Bokka that are doing the action. That is the Bokka that is doing the action. Yeah, it's a bit confusing that one. The spring box, no, they that are doing the action. The bus we have here was driven by the principal. Again, the principal is the one doing the action. And, of course, pictures were painted by the artists. Again, it is the object, the artists, that are doing the action. Let's move on. And now we look in the, at the continuous form of the sentence. And you are reminded there, action being done um, by the subject. So there it is. Now, the only difference here in continuous form it's something which is currently in progress. Palesa is buying stationery. Still present tense, but now continuous form. Okay. The Springboks are winning the match. There it's in progress. And the principal was driving the bus. And you have the artists were painting pictures. You can see always with that ing um, suffix on the end of the verb. And let's look at it now in the passive voice, still continuous form. And you have stationery is being bought by Palesa. See, it's happening right now. Uh, the match is being won by the spring box. It's happening right now. The bus was being driven by the principal. It was happening back then, but it was in progress. And pictures were being painted by the artists. And there you see it again, something that was in progress then. Now, let's take a look at this. It's slightly different um, because here everything is in the future tense. Okay, Palesa will buy stationery. Perfectly straightforward. And there you've got the passive voice version of it. Stationery will be bought by Palesa. Okay, all straightforward. The Springboks will win the match, and the match will be won by the Springboks. Okay, straightforward once again. The principal will drive the bus, and the bus will be driven by the principal. Okay, now things get a bit more complicated. The artists will be painting pictures, and pictures will be being painted by the artists. Oh dear. Now it starts to become cumbersome. Okay, now that we're into the um, continuous form, uh, it's far more cumbersome in the uh, passive voice. Active voice, the students will be watching the play. Okay, no problem there. But 
now you've got the play will be being watched by the students. It sounds terrible, even though it's grammatically correct, just for the record. But wow, that is a very cumbersome uh, sentence there. And here's another one uh, in the active voice. No problem. We shall be developing the technology. And in the passive voice, uh oh, the technology will be being developed by us. This is why sometimes it is not appropriate to use the passive voice. Now, let's take a look at these notes here. Okay, it is a fact that usually English sentences are in the active voice. And the passive voice, it says there, changes the focus of the sentence. Here are some examples. Um, because, well, you want to, uh, the focus of the sentence is always on what comes before the verb, whether it's um, active or passive. So, Take a look here. Sometimes if you're using the passive voice, you don't have to include the object. Take a look at this. Um, here it is in the active. You must pay this account within a week. That's the active form. In the passive form, this account must be paid within a week. And you don't have to include by you. It's understood. It's being addressed to you. Right? And here's another example. Uh, here we are. The goalie skillfully deflected the ball past the post. Now, the focus there is on the goalie. But uh, if you want to change it to the ball, you put it into the passive. The ball was skillfully deflected past the post by the goalie. There it is in the passive voice. Uh, you don't have to write by the goalie. Obviously, it's the goalie doing the deflecting uh, as he saves. <laughs> Now, that's all I have for you today. However, before we say goodbye, there we are. There is a beautifully simple task for you to perform. It's lots of fun also. You'll see 11 questions, and I'm sure that you, can, you are easily going to be able to answer them all. Please take a look and enjoy it. Thank you for listening. And I'm, or watching, I should say, and I'm going to say goodbye at this point.